Kia ora koto. welcome everyone. We'll just give a few more moments for people to join us in the webinar today. It's great to see you all along. Hopefully you can see and hear us okay. We'll just wait a few more seconds for people to join. Great. It's great to have you with us today for this Services to Schools webinar. Call Maxine Ramsey, Toko Ingoa. I'm one of the Services to Schools facilitators based in Dunedin, and I'll be your host for today. Just before we begin, there's a few housekeeping things that we'd like to cover off. You'll all be familiar with the way webinars work, but just to remind you, as an attendee, you can use the chat function if you want to talk to other attendees or panelists, just double click the drop down box and make sure you're addressing the people you want to talk to. We have a Q&A section in the webinar that you're welcome to post questions into, and you can upvote the questions if you need to, which means if somebody's posed a question that you, um, want to promote or agree with and you also want to ask just tick the, the upvote. Um, we'll be saving those questions for our follow-up Q&A next week so please do enter those um, if you wish to today. Also if you are having any technical difficulties please raise your hand and we'll do the best we can to support you with that. If you need to leave the webinar use the leave button at the bottom right hand side of your screen and you can rejoin us at any stage using the link we emailed to you. After today's webinar, you'll receive an email which will include a link to our Survey Monkey, which is another opportunity to post some questions um, that we will use as a basis for next week's Q&A session. There'll also be a registration link for the Q&A Zoom next week and some follow-up notes from today, which will include all of the links that we're using in this webinar. Uh, so you don't have to take lots of notes. We will send you links, but you are welcome to take notes as you wish today. I'll now start with Karakia. Whakatakate hao ki te uru, whakatakate hao ki te tonga. Ki a kina kina ki uta, ki a mā tara tara ki tai. E hiakiana te atakura, he tio, he huka, he hohu, tihe Māori ora. Joining me in today's webinar are presenters Kathy Kennedy from Christchurch and Amanda Bond from Auckland. Kathy and Amanda are both facilitators from our Services to Schools capability team, and it's great to have them along. During today's webinar, we're going to start with an overview of the histories curriculum before we delve a little deeper into some of the ways you can support this through your school library collection. The information we're sharing today is intended as a starting point, which you can build on through your own learning, conversations with others, and the work you do in your school library. In particular today, we'll be focusing on the journey of this curriculum, the content and structure of the document, a closer look at supporting resources, suggestions of some ways to approach your school library collection, and finally looking at actions you can take back at school as you start to make a plan for what you're going to do next. And now it's my pleasure to hand over to Kathy Kennedy. Thanks, Kathy. Kia ora Maxine, hopefully you can all see me nice and clearly. Tina koto katoa, uh, ina mana, ina reo, ina hau i whā, tēnā koutou katoa. Um, as Maxine said, I'm Cathy Kennedy and I'm one of the facilitators based in Christchurch. So I'm just going to share my screen, so bear with me while we get that all up and running. 
So for the first part of this webinar, I'm just going to take you through um, a little overview of the Aotearoa New Zealand's Histories document. Um, we'll look at briefly the journey of that document and how we got here. Um, a look at the structure and content. And then finally, I'll just finish off my section before Amanda takes over with a little look at how it might look in the classroom. So first of all, how did this document arrive here? What sort of journey did we take? So I think it's pretty widely accepted um, that understanding our past can help us as a human society make better sense of our present and then prepare us for our future. Um, many a famous person has um, can be quoted on this, and here's a quote from Theodore Roosevelt, the more you know about the past, the better prepared you are for the future. And for me, this whakatauki really says it really beautifully. Kia whakatomori, te haere whakamua. I walk backwards into the future with my eyes fixed on the past. So it was in this context that for a number of years, there's been calls for our history, our own New Zealand history, to be taught compulsory in our schools. Um, our current curriculum document is very broad and gives us a framework. And it gives schools autonomy to choose a lot of the topics that they'd like to teach within um, the learning areas. And it comes as a, surprise, as a surprise to many people that our own New Zealand history was often being missed. So there was some inconsistency about whether New Zealand's histories were being taught in schools or not. So over the years, there were many voices to call for some change to this. And many of those voices came from our youth, our rangatahi. This quote here sums up um, what those voices were, were telling us. This is from um, Christian Dennison, one of the youth MPs. And he said, a lot of racism comes from ignorance. Ignorance comes from miseducation or lack of education. And we found if we incorporated into the curriculum Māori history, we'd be able to get rid of a lot of these false past narratives. Now this photo that you can see here on the screen is a group of Aotearoa College students and they in 2015 took a petition to Parliament to um, have a day of commemoration for the New Zealand Wars and for the New Zealand Wars to be taught in all New Zealand schools. And another example of the voices that were um, calling for some change was uh, Graham Bell from Graham Ball, sorry, from the New Zealand History Teachers Association. And he says it very succinctly, whether you're born here or whether you're a new New Zealander, it's important to have an understanding of our shared past. And he'd like all New Zealanders to have an opportunity to make informed judgments about what's happening today where things have their roots in the past. So all these voices were heard finally by the government in 2019, and it was announced that New Zealand history would indeed be taught in all New Zealand schools by 2022. That's been delayed by a year now to 2023 due to COVID and all the things that schools are dealing with at the moment. Um, and the work then began so the work was done by a number of different people, education leaders, community groups, iwi historians, um, academics, teachers, of course, and students. And it was done via um, a number of different groups. There were reference groups, writing groups, uh, interagency groups. Um, there was, of course, peer review. There was public consultation. Some of you might remember the, the time of public consultation, and some of you may even made, have made some submissions. And, of course, there was some testing and consultation in schools. Now, if you want to know a little bit more about who was involved in that process and how that process unfolded to get to this document, there's a very good piece from the Ministry of Education. Um, there's the name of the article, but we'll actually put a, um, a link in the follow-up notes for you to that article. It actually outlines the, the actual people who were involved in all those groups as well. Now, this work on the Aotearoa Histories um, curriculum document was actually taking place as part of a much wider piece of work, and that's the curriculum refresh. So all learning areas of our curriculum are going to be refreshed, so no, nothing will go untouched. 
And these are the four key goals for that refresh. It was in order to honour our obligations to the Treaty of Waitangi, to ensure that the curriculum is inclusive for all Arcona or all students, so they can see themselves in the learning that takes place. Um, to ensure that the New Zealand curriculum is clear, and it does state clearly about the learning that's important or the learning that matters, and to make it easier for teachers to give them some more guidance about the learning that matters. Once again, if you want to know more about that wider curriculum refresh on the screen, there's, a, there's two um, uh, articles you might like to read. Again, we'll send you the links. But alongside this curriculum refresh is quite some major change to our NCA programme, and those are both really useful articles to take a look at and be aware of. So this is where we've landed so far today. We have two curriculum documents. We have Te Marotonga or Aotearoa, and we have the New Zealand curriculum. So Te Marotonga or Te Aotearoa for Māori medium schools, and the New Zealand curriculum for English medium schools. Now those documents are unchanged. They haven't been thrown out. Um, nothing changes for those documents, but rather the refresh is adding some information and more documents to those learning areas. So the Aotearoa Histories um, curriculum was the first cab off the rank and is now completed and good to go. But also that document sits inside the social sciences learning area and the social sciences refresh is now currently in draft. And that's something you can have a look at. You can simply search the internet, you'll find that draft curriculum. And that will also show you how the Aotearoa Histories sits inside the social sciences draft. Now, how do schools make sense of all those documents? So that's done through the school's local curriculum. So the national curriculum, as stated in this uh, quote from the Ministry of Education, is a clear statement of what's important in education, almost the pointers to what we want to happen in our schools. But the local curriculum brings it alive and it gives schools some autonomy, to um, take that statement for learning and make it relevant and engagement, engaging for the learners in their community. This quote by a principal, I think really puts it rather nicely. And it says, I see the national curriculum as the bones and what schools have to do is put the meat and the muscles around them and get the heart pumping. Now, the reason I mentioned this uh, local curriculum today is because it's very important for you as library teams that you understand what is in your school's local curriculum, or indeed where your school is on the local curriculum journey, because all schools will be in different places. Some will be starting on this journey, some will have it in place. And in fact, all schools will be coming back to their local curriculum as the, as the refresh unfolds. And I think it's really important for you as library staff is to be in on those conversations, make sure you're aware of the document, you have your school's local curriculum document, um, and take part and collaborate with teachers as it develops because you can't resource something that you don't know about. Okay, so that's a little look at the journey and how we got here very, very briefly. So now we're going to have a little look at the content and the structure of the Aotearoa Histories curriculum document. Now, if you have the document in front of you, that's great. Um, you can follow along. On each slide, we have got the page numbers of um, the part of the document we're referring to. But if you don't have the document, that's absolutely not a problem at all. All the information you need will be up on the screen here that I'll show you. And you can go and have a deeper look at the, at the document later on. So let's have a peek inside. So the Aotearoa Histories document is based around three elements. It's understand, know and do. Now it's important to note that these three elements don't sit separately and they aren't a sequence. So they actually weave together to create the learning that you see in the classroom. None of these three can exist on their own. They have to be woven together to create the important learning. 
Now, you will hear a lot about understand, know and do because the whole curriculum refresh is being based around this structure. The other thing to point out about this document is it's for years 1 to 10. Um, for the year 11, 12, 13 years, that's NCA years, and the teaching of New Zealand history isn't compulsory in those years, although the histories, our histories may continue into those years in some schools. The social sciences document, of course, which includes history, goes right up to year 13. So let's have a look at each of those three elements. Understand are the big ideas, the big ideas that underpin the learning. And for this um, curriculum, there are four big ideas. Firstly, that Māori history is foundational and the continuous history of Aotearoa New Zealand. So the idea that Māori have been settling here, telling stories here and shaping these lands for centuries and will continue to do so. Uh, secondly, that colonisation and settlement have been central to Aotearoa New Zealand's history for the past 200 years. And this has contributed to a diverse population of many languages and many cultures. Uh, the course of Aotearoa New Zealand's history has been shaped by the use of power. Um, this can both improve the lives of people and communities, but it's also led to injustices and conflict. And finally, that relationships and connections between people and across boundaries have shaped the course of Aotearoa New Zealand's histories. So that's the local national um, connections that we've made through trade, uh, voyaging and conflict that's shaped our nation. So these four big ideas don't change throughout all the years, through years nine, uh, one to 10 of the curriculum. They remain in place, but of course, the understanding that students bring to these big ideas becomes deeper and broader. So you'll see these same four big ideas throughout all the learning years. So how do we unpack and broaden and deepen these big ideas and that's through the no context so these are the the contexts or the topics the events the places the people that students learn about or engage in um, to unpack and learn about those big ideas and there are four contexts um, stated in the curriculum so first of all, culture and identity, which is how the past shapes who we are, who I am, who are my family links, my bonds, my, my connections. Uh, secondly, government and organisation. So that is looking at the history of power and control and of course the contests that have happened um, over that power and control. Second, uh, thirdly, place and environment, the relationships of um, people with the land, our natural resources, and again, um, the control and the use and the protection of those resources. And finally, the fourth context is economic activity. Um, how have people made their living um, in the past, uh, both individually and collectively? Now those four contexts um, do change through the years of the curriculum. So as an example, here we have the culture and identity context. Uh, I know you can't read all those words on the screen, but the sheer volume of text gives you some idea that in the early years, they are very simple ideas, right to much more complex learning in years nine and 10. And if we just pop a couple out there from um, the first one from years one to three, the idea is that people in our area have come from a variety of places and some retain connections to those places. And I'm going to show you how that looks shortly in the classroom right up to something way more complex with, um, yes, it's culture and identity, but the understanding that some groups have been marginalised, so there has been injustices, a much more complex idea to look at for years nine and 10. Now, when the schools are thinking about 
what topics or what events will we look at, because this is where schools have been given that autonomy to do that. Um, the document gives some ideas of what schools can think about. So first of all, how will the topic obviously help students explore the big ideas? So the four big ideas, will this topic further that deeper understanding of those? Will the topic draw on stories and examples and perspectives so students can learn about the history from their local area in Aotearoa, New Zealand? Uh, will the topic you choose draw on stories from iwi and hapu um, and their history in your region, your rohe or your region? Will the topic support student-led inquiries so they can they uh, inquire into that topic um, independently and look at stories from their own region and their local area? Is the topic important to your rohi and your local area now? Is it still relevant? So learning about that past, is there some relevance to our um, present and our future? And finally, will this topic support um, and can apply to their learning as they move through into more complex uh, contexts later on in their learning years. So those are just some guidelines to help schools think about, well, what topics or events or contexts will we look at? And then finally, the third element. So this is the do element. These are the inquiry practices or the activities um, that enable students to start thinking critically about the past and unpacking those topics or those events that you've decided to look at. So we have three inquiry practices in the curriculum. First of all, identifying and exploring historical relationships. So this is looking at sequencing events um, and very importantly, understanding that depending on who is telling the story, the same story can be told in different ways. Secondly, identifying sources and perspectives. And this one will resonate with many of you, I think, in um, school libraries. This is ensuring that students are uh, drawing from a broad range of historical sources in many formats, um, also paying attention to Mataranga Māori sources. Um, and when they are looking at these sources, considering authorship and purpose, and to identify the voices that are missing. And finally, uh, interpreting past decisions, experiences, and actions. So this is looking at history in the context of the attitudes and the values of the time. So you can understand the predicaments that people found them in, which tells us about the decisions they made and their points of view. So the do element, let's have a little bit of a closer look at the do element. Again, this does change and become more complex. These inquiry practices obviously become more complex as children move through their learning years at school. Let's again pop out a couple from each end of the learning years. So in years one to three, they would be able to say, I can retell a story from the past and talk about how other people might tell it differently. Very simple. Whereas in years nine and 10, they will be looking at much more complex ideas, looking at cause and effect, relationships between events and changes over time and comparing changes over time. So much more complex inquiry practices. So that's a look at those three elements separately. But the document also for each group of year levels brings those three elements woven together. And that's the progressions that they give us in the document. So here we have the progress outcomes for year three. So it's all the same information that we've just looked at, but now we're looking at just the year three, understand, know, and do. And this is a clear indication that teachers and schools are being required to cover this learning by the end of year three. So how does this actually all look in the classroom? That's a lot of information, a lot of context, a lot of inquiry practices. What might you actually see in the classroom or what might you see happening in your library as children engage in a learning topic? 
So here's an example of a topic that you'll already see in lots of schools. This is me and my community. Now, for example, this clearly has a component from the New Zealand histories curriculum, from the culture and heritage um, context, learning about people in your area who have come from a variety of places and sharing where we have all come from in our class or our community. But in addition to that, there'll be learning objectives that will come in from the social sciences curriculum that will go beyond just um, Aotearoa and New Zealand's histories. In addition to that, teachers might bring into this topic aspects from the health and PE curriculum um, around healthy communities and rights and responsibilities. Uh, parts of the arts uh, curriculum might come in here. Um, teachers might decide to express where we will come from in music, dance, drama or visual art. And of course, not much can happen in a classroom without the English learning area in action with reading, listening, viewing, writing, speaking and presenting. So in actual fact, if you walked into a classroom and watched this uh, topic in action, you might not immediately see, oh yes, that's Aotearoa New Zealand's histories, but it's being integrated in there. Now, of course, all around that is um, going on, the inquiry practices will be happening to make all that learning happen. And it will be extending the big ideas. And you'll see the vision, principles, the values, and the key competencies in action from the New Zealand curriculum document. And you'll see guidance from the school's local curriculum all in action. So when you see that learning in the classroom, it's actually being underpinned by quite a complex number of um, uh, documents. So another example, this one is the, looking at the Chinese miners, the immigrants in the Otago gold rush. Now this one very clearly sits in Aotearoa New Zealand's history. And if you walked into a classroom and saw this one in action, you'd go, oh yes, I can see the Aotearoa New Zealand's Histories document in action here. And this topic actually potentially could take in all of the no contexts quite easily. They cover all, they cover the culture and identity context, place and environment, government organisation and economic activity as you unpack these, um, this group of people in the Otago Gold Rush. And of course, again, that would be happening using the inquiry practices. It would be furthering the big ideas that underpin the curriculum. And of course, we have the New Zealand curriculum in place um, underpinning all of that and the school's local curriculum. So that's just another example of what it might look like in a classroom. That's very relevant for learners who are in Otago, but of course for learners in Auckland, there will be a completely different group of people that they may look at, different, a different group of immigrants that they may look at in their local area. Now just one last thing from me, um, before I hand over to Amanda very shortly, is there are these pages in the uh, curriculum as well, which give some ideas of key questions in learning experiences. Now, I just want to point out that that key knowledge down the side, those are the no context. So that's directly from the document and that's what all schools will be doing. But these key questions in learning experience are actually just suggestions. So you may do some of these, teachers may definitely um, take these key questions and explore these learning experiences, but your school may not. There are different ways that you could unpack each of those contexts. And again, this is where it comes back to collaborating with your teachers, knowing how your school is going to deliver this um, curriculum document and um, understanding your school's local curriculum. So finally, if you do want to know more about um, the Aotearoa New Zealand's histories, is go to this website, uh, you search and you'll find it, but we will send you the link. This will cover the journey to arriving at this document. It has the document itself here, um, an online version and a PDF that you can download. And there's an absolute treasure trove of resources in here. So I'd encourage you to spend some time having a look around this website. Um, it'd be incredibly helpful and your, your teachers will be using this website quite a, quite a, um, a great deal. 
All right, so I'm going to hand over to Amanda. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And just as Amanda's getting herself um, ready to share her screen, just a reminder, if you have any questions on any of um, the content that I've just mentioned, please pop it in the Q&A. We're not going to answer those questions today, but we'll answer those in the Q&A webinar next week. Thanks, everybody. Over to you, Amanda. Thank you, Kathy. I was just going to say exactly the same thing, a reminder to use the Q&A and we will be monitoring those and uh, definitely working on those with you next week. Kia ora koutou, ko Amanda Bond, toko enoa. Now that we've had a look at the curriculum, we can focus on the role of the school library and its implementation. As school librarians, a major part of our work is in providing resources to support the teaching and learning that happens in our schools. Just as the strands understand, know and do weave together in the curriculum, so too the school librarian works with the classroom teacher to help our students learn an important to help our students learn. An important part of our work in the school library is to seek out opportunities to discuss what resources are needed with our teaching colleagues. This year, as the history's curriculum went from draft to implementation, classroom teachers were encouraged to begin this work by looking at what they were already teaching as part of their history lessons. Today, we want to encourage you to start with your collection and look at what you have right now. All library collections include print and digital aspects. Our collections should be balanced, inclusive, acknowledge our school community and Mataranga Māori. We will show you some ways to take a fresh look at your collections in the light of this curriculum document, asking, what resources do I have now? And are they a good fit for the curriculum progression stage for our students. Our goal is not to give you an endless list of possible resources, but to show how to look at resources to see that they match with the no part of the curriculum. Kathy showed you a couple of ways teachers may want to teach the curriculum with a broad focus. She used the examples of me and my community, which involved the histories curriculum, as well as social sciences, health and PE, the arts and English. And the other topic she looked at was the Otago Gold Rush, which could cover many of the no strands of the history's curriculum. Over the next few slides, for the sake of simplicity, I will take a very focused and narrow approach to how to evaluate resources to see that they match the curriculum content at year level progressions. To show you how to do this, we'll take a close look at one strand of the curriculum, the no strand of Tino Rangatira Tanga Metakawana Tanga, Government and Organisation. As you can see in this overview of the strand, as the year levels progress, the content deepens. We will look at each one more closely in a moment. On some slides, as Kathy has mentioned, there are page numbers relating to the hard copy of the curriculum. And if you've got it with you, you may want to use a highlighter or add sticky notes to remind you of ideas. We chose this strand because it includes learning about the Treaty of Waitangi, a topic many schools already cover. In fact, Gennaro Oliveria and Matt Kennedy in their research paper, Learning in and from primary schools, teaching Aotearoa New Zealand's histories at years one to six. Comment about possible treaty fatigue as it is covered so often. The good news is that more than 75% of teachers in their study felt confident delivering lessons about the treaty. We will see how this familiar topic has been developed in the curriculum and what implications there are for libraries and librarians resourcing it. To create these examples, I used print and digital resources. For the print resources, I used books from our National Library School's Lending Collection. As the students move through the school, the knowledge progressions deepen and the resources change 
to accommodate the content and growing ability of students to access information from these resources. Let's start with our youngest students. In years one to three, in the no strand of government and organisation, our younger Tamariki will come to know about the signing of Titility, what happened on that day, who is there, and why it is a national holiday. These students are emerging readers, and so the resources we select will take this into account. Images are a great way to engage student curiosity. The image on the top left of the slide is a painting thought to be by artist Oriwa Haddon, Nati Ranui. He lived from 1898 to 1958. Haddon's painting shows a different perspective to the image beneath it, and it is thought to be a more accurate view of the signing of the treaty when reading Colenso's account of the day. You can find this image and the one below it on our Services to Schools Teaching and Learning pages in the Te Kupinga collection. Haddon's painting is in the article Another View of Waitangi. The image underneath it in the bottom left-hand corner is by Marcus King, and the painting is called The Signing of the Treaty of Waitangi, February 1840. This is an imagined version of the signing of the treaty. You can find this image, as I said before, in the Te Kupinga collection. This article is called Signing the Treaty. Both images have information about them on the Te Kupinga web pages, and teachers could read about them and just gather their own understanding. And then they could develop an activity such as I see, I think, I wonder to lead students to explore what happened on that day and who was there. William's Waitangi Day by David Ling, illustrated by Nikki Slade Robinson, published by Duck Creek Press in 2018, is a picture book. In it, the main character, William, is new to New Zealand and his classmates all have their own answer to his question, what is Waitangi Day? Why is it a national holiday? The Treaty House by Leanne Orams, Reed Publishing, 2007, is a good book for giving an understanding of the national significance of the treaty. In it, the Treaty House is personified and tells its story from when it was first built to modern day. The resources I have chosen here focus on the content areas of signing the treaty, what happened on the day, who was there, and why it is a national holiday. As we continue to progress through the year levels and the government and organization strand, it expands for the year four to six students. While there are other aspects of the snow strand, we will focus only on the part that relates to tertiality for the sake of simplicity. At years four to six, the children will know Tertility was signed in different places. There were two versions, and there were different understandings about the word authority. The Treaty of Waitangi by Mary Fanang, Scholastic 2003, shows the treaty was written in two languages and was signed in different places. Tertility o Waitangi by Ross Kalman, Mark Darby, and Toby Morris published by the Ministry of Education in 2018 is a comic book or graphic novel and gives a clear gives clear information about the two versions, the signing in different places and understandings about the words sovereignty and authority. A YouTube video, The Voyages of Tetility o Waitangi from He Tohu is just over three minutes and shows the places where the treaty was signed. All of these are appropriate for year level and curriculum content. As you can see again, we've progressed up the year levels and the government and organization strand has deepened for years seven to eight. We will focus on the part that relates to tertility. These students will know 
what led to the Declaration of Independence and Tertiality, and how national and international events in informed the Crown's thinking and actions. Awesome Aotearoa by Margaret Mahi, AUT Media 2009, covers many aspects of New Zealand history. The chapter on the Treaty of Waitangi gives a good overview of national and international events happening around the time the treaty was signed. Its colloquial style and humour may well appeal to this age group. New Zealand History website has many articles to choose from. With scaffolding and guidance, it would be a good resource for exploring what led to the Declaration of Independence and Tertiality and how national and international events informed the Crown's, the Crown's thinking. The Aotearoa History Show, created by Radio New Zealand, is on YouTube. It covers the national and international events, including frustration over Pakeha behaviour at Russell, the foundation of the United Tribes of New Zealand, and the Declaration of Independence, and it outlines the different European factions, the French, Wakefield and the New Zealand Company, the British Colonial Office, missionaries and British humanitarian movements, all involved in New Zealand at the time. Again, I'm selecting resources for year level and the specific content of the no strand for the curriculum. Finally, for the older students, we see that we will look again just at the treaty content, even though there's more to this no strand. At this stage, the students will know the Crown has established a colonial state. Māori are working to affirm Tino Rangatiratanga. What the Waitangi Tribunal is, its investigations, settlements and treaty engagement. Waitangi Day, the New Zealand story, what it is and why it matters by Philip Aweri, published by New Holland in 2015, reviews the historic events behind the signing of the Treaty of Waitangi and charts the celebrations, tensions and protests in the years that followed. Our Treaty by Ruth Nauman, Newhouse Publishers 2002, considers the importance of the Treaty of Waitangi in New Zealand history, describing the historical events which took place before and after it was signed, and the social and cultural changes which resulted from contact between Māori and Pākehā. It examines the developments which occurred during the 20th century in search for social justice and human rights for Māori, specifically with the establishment of the Treaty of the Waitangi Tribunal. This web page, Not One More Acre, is from the Tikapinga collection on the teaching and learning resources pages of Services to Schools National Library website. It is about the land claims and is relevant for Māori working to affirm Tinoranga Tiratanga. Tiara, the Encyclopedia of New Zealand, has stories on the Waitangi Tribunal and, of course, the Waitangi Tribunal website all provide information on what the tribunal is, what, is, what are its investigations, the settlements that have been created, and treaty engagement. There are more resources available um, in this year level due to the seniority of the students that they um, are getting on through the school years and the content they cover. So, as you can see, the same no strand covers different knowledge about the Treaty of Waitangi depending on the year level and it also requires different resources. As I said at the start, the point of these slides is not to give an exhausted list of possible resources, but to show how we need to select them for year level and curriculum content. Of course, as you select resources, you will take into account authorship, purpose, and most importantly, whose voices may be missing. Use the history's curriculum and your school's local curriculum to understand the content for the year levels of students using your library. 
discuss with teachers and curriculum leads their topics and approaches, then assess what you have in your library now. See the possible gaps and think about how to develop your collection to meet the learning and teaching needs of your community. As you know, resources come in many, many formats and some will be more important for particular purposes during an inquiry. For this webinar, I selected print and digital resources. Of course, other resources such as places, people in your community and artifacts and all the ones you see on your screen right now can all contribute to the teaching and learning of this curriculum. Our National Library Curiosity Cards are an example of print, digital, primary, secondary, images, objects, people, places, tools and guides all coming together. The Curiosity Cards can be found in the Tuia Mataranga section of our Services to Schools website. They are available as downloadable PDFs and many schools have hard copies which were sent out a few years ago. When using them from the website, there are links to Digital New Zealand stories for every card, and these stories have additional resources and content relating to the topic of the card. These cards also include questions which can be used to spark curiosity and inquiry. The example shown on this slide is a photo of the 1975 Hikoi, known, uh, known as the Māori Land March, in Hamilton, led by Tama Iti and Fina Cooper, and would be useful for years 9 to 10 in the government and organisation strand. This slide shows the cover of the book Te Kupinga. Te Kupinga, the net, is short for Te Kupinga, 101 Stories of Aotearoa from the Turnbull. This book was produced as part of the centennial celebrations of the collections of the Alexander Turnbull Library. 39 people created mini essays or stories based on items they selected from the Turnbull collections. Some of the stories are in Te Reo Pākehā and some in Te Reo Māori. The selected items include photographs, manuscripts, maps, music, digital media, drawings, paintings and books. A copy has been sent to all heads of social sciences in your secondary schools and you can request it from the lending service if you want to see a hard copy. National Library Services to Schools has taken stories from the book and added curated resources and created Te Kupinga Stories of Aotearoa New Zealand online and these can be used as I have done in the slides to enhance the history's curriculum. Each story is supported by links to other relevant items in the Alexander Turnbull Library collections and to curations of resources from Topic Explorer and Many Answers. We've included the links to these online resources in the follow-up notes which will be sent out after the webinar. Just to show you, uh, Here's a screenshot showing the um, web page of the teaching and learning resources I've been mentioning a lot. You can see a link to Te Kupinga in the menu box on the right hand side. If you're looking for digital resources for the teaching and learning of this curriculum, these pages are a great place to start. Later in this term, in week seven, we'll be running some Zoom meetings about our digital resources to support the Aotearoa New Zealand Histories curriculum. Our resources maps are another tool you can use to evaluate your collection. These are available on our website in the teaching and learning area in the topic inquiry exemplars and templates section. Don't worry, that link is in the follow-up notes. They're a useful way to identify what you have in your collection and where the gaps are. I like the way you can include digital, people, field trips, as well as books. You can remove some of the categories or change them to suit your purposes. They give you the opportunity to record the resources you have and still need for any topic. So in the print resources, check what you have in the library, of course, but ask what else is available elsewhere in the school. 
for digital content, our teaching and learning resources pages will really help you locate high quality curated digital content. Then what other resource could, resources could you access? Locally, you could try museums, historical societies, and don't forget people, community members and local iwi. And also nationally, you have access to the Services to Schools Lending Collection. Our team of facilitators are happy to assist with this kind of work. After you've heard from your teachers about their focus and content and, and could then create the resource map, that way you can go back to them and show what is available and decide together how to move forward to create loans for the National Library or to find other ways to resource the cur curriculum areas they, they are teaching. Now that we've looked at resources and your connection, it's over to you, Maxine, to look at the next steps and I will stop sharing my screen. Kia ora, thanks so much, Amanda. I'll just share the screen. So we've given you a lot of information during this webinar. And we know that this will take some time for you to consider as you think about what your next steps will be. Please remember that you're not alone in your learning about the Aotearoa New Zealand's Histories curriculum. Every school will, will be moving forward with this in different ways and be at different stages along the implementation journey. The main thing for you as school library staff is to be part of that journey and part of the conversations at your school. So what are you going to do next to be ready for this curriculum? Over the coming weeks and months, there will be a number of different ways you can start to prepare yourself and your school library to be ready for this curriculum. Learn, learn as much as you can, engage in professional reading and learning, participate in planning, collaborate with school staff and be part of the conversations. Find out as much as you can about what's happening in your school. Assess your current collection, both in the library and throughout the school. Find out what resources you already have, which year levels they will work for, and consider the range of both print and digital formats you have. Identify and seek out resources to add to your collection. Talk with teachers about any gaps there might be and any suggestions they have for buying so that you can incorporate these into your collection development plan. Look at your collection and observe how students and teachers access resources. Think about different ways you might highlight specific parts of the collection to support the history's curriculum. And of course, share. Spread the word about your library collections and services. Remember, you are your best advocate, so go for it. We've included here a small selection of different places that you might want to check out after this webinar. The, there's many others, but we've just chosen a few because otherwise it can become a little bit overwhelming. Services to schools, we'll, we will be offering P in the coming weeks and months. As Amanda mentioned in week seven, we'll be offering a, web, a Zoom meeting around our digital resources. And keep an eye on our professional learning and support web page, where we will be adding further events as time goes on. The Association of Educators Beyond the Classroom has some useful resources that you can check out. The New Zealand Teachers History Teachers Association has been running webinars and will continue to do so. These are aimed mainly at secondary teaching staff and can be really useful as a way to hear the conversations around what this curriculum might look like in the classroom. And of course, the related discussion to that around resourcing that and the potential resources that might be useful. The Aotearoa Social Studies Educators Network is another place to look if you want to find out more. And as always, remember to talk with your history and social studies teachers about how you might be included in any PD opportunities which are happening in your school. 
Of course, we're always here to help and support you as you move forward. We can help with collection development, advice and guidance, as well as support for using our lending service and much more. You can always call us on 0800 from 8 to 5, Monday to Friday. So just a reminder, after today you will receive an email with the SurveyMonkey link so that you can ask any further questions you might have. It's good to have a bit of time to reflect after today. Pop those questions into the SurveyMonkey by Friday this week. We have a fairly short turnaround time for that. And we will take uh, those questions into account as we prepare the Q&A follow-up next week. There will also be a registration link to our follow-up Q&A session, which is scheduled for the same time next Wednesday. And we'll respond to your questions in that session and share some of the ways that we can support you in your work. Please note that the Q&A Zoom meeting won't be recorded, so it will be just a live event. Thanks so much for joining us today. We hope you'll go, you're buzzing with lots of ideas about going forward. And I'll now close our session with karakia. Kia ira hia te kete korero ki te tahuhu o te whare. Kei awatea nga taumaha o tēne hui. Kei awairoia nga tapu o tēne wānanga. Tuturu whakamaua ki a tīna tīna. Haumi ei, hui ei, taiki ei. My thanks to my co-presenters today, Kathy and Amanda. Thanks so much for joining us and we look forward to seeing you next week.